In this video, we're going to look at creating a blank session using the Quick Start dialog box, and then we'll add tracks to that session. As you can see, there are a variety of session parameter settings. These include the audio file type, the sample rate, the I.O. settings, and the session bit depth. In Pro Tools 10, the available audio file types include Broadcast Wave, which is a variation on a .wav file, and AIFF. Wave is the default, and it's generally a good idea to use Wave for most of your projects. Next, we can choose the sample rate. Pro Tools supports sample rates up to 192 kHz, but that assumes you have an interface that can handle a sample rate that high. Of the available sample rates, the most commonly used are 44.1 kHz for music and 48 kHz for post-production. Next, we have the I.O. settings selector. This allows you to quickly choose a preset input and output configuration. Depending on your system configuration, you'll see a variety of settings here. They may include stereo and surround presets. The last used setting will load the settings from your last session. In a typical music session, you would choose Stereo Mix. Then there are a variety of additional settings for post-production, including 5.1 surround formats. Next we have the Bit Depth Selector, which in Pro Tools 10 lets you select between 16-bit, 24-bit, and 32-bit floating point bit depths. For most sessions, the best choice is 24-bit. It's important to understand that both the sample rate and bit depth will change the audio recording storage requirements for your session. For example, if you set the sample rate to 44.1 kHz and the session bit depth to 16-bit, you'll be using about 5 megabytes for each mono track minute. However, if you retain the 44.1 kHz sample rate, but increase the bit depth to 24-bit, you'll be using 7.5 megabytes for each mono track minute. Increasing the sample rate will increase the storage requirements even further. For example, a sample rate of 88.2 kHz with a bit depth of 24-bit will consume about 15 megabytes per mono track minute. You don't need to memorize every permutation of sample rate and bit depth and the resulting storage usage, but it's a good idea to have a few of them memorized so that you can make a rough estimate of your storage needs. Once we're happy with our session parameters, we can click OK to create the session. This will bring up the Save Session dialog, where you can choose a location and a name for the new session. Once your session is open, you'll need to add some tracks. You can do this by going to the Track menu and choosing New, or by using the keyboard shortcut Command-Shift-N on the Mac or Control-Shift-N on Windows. Then the New Tracks dialog will appear. Here you can specify the number of tracks you want to create, the channel width of the tracks, which will include mono and stereo and may include additional surround formats depending on your system configuration. Then you can choose the audio track type, Track types in Pro Tools include audio tracks, which are your basic tracks for recording and editing audio. Next, you can see auxiliary inputs, which are typically used for effects returns or sub-mixing a group of audio tracks. Master faders, which are generally used to control hardware output levels. Then we have VCA masters, which are only available if you have Pro Tools HD software or Pro Tools with Complete Production Toolkit. Then we have MIDI tracks, which are used to store MIDI note and controller data. Instrument tracks, which are designed for composing with virtual instruments and combine the features of an auxiliary input and a MIDI track into a single track. And finally, video tracks, which lets you play back video in the Pro Tools timeline. Next, we have the Track Time Base Selector, which allows you to set the time base in either samples or ticks. Audio tracks are sample-based by default, which means that audio clips on the timeline have absolute time locations which correlate to specific sample locations. On the other hand, MIDI and instrument tracks are tick-based by default, meaning that MIDI clips on the track are fixed to bar and beat positions and move relative to the session's meter and tempo. Once you've added tracks to the session, the easiest way to rename them is simply to double-click on the track name. Here you can type in a new name for the track, and also cycle through the tracks in your session using the Next and Previous buttons. You can also cycle through tracks using Command left or right arrow on the Mac or Control left or right arrow on Windows. To delete a track, you can simply select the track, then go to the Track menu and choose Delete. However, a faster way is to right-click the track name and choose Delete from the pop-up menu. 